Welcome to Dining Fables, a food channel dedicated to going local to eat global. Today's going to be an absolute treat. We're off into Maidenhead again to try one of the newer restaurants I've yet to visit in town. It constantly amazes me the volume of variety of street food and restaurants that are now in Maidenhead, which is a pretty small and unassuming town in Berkshire. So this week, I'm off to visit Miyazaki, a traditional Japanese restaurant. I've heard of this as a bit of a local secret, serving amazing food to the lucky locals. I'm a bit of a Japanese food fan, so I'm really looking forward to some excellent sushi and sashimi. So let's check them out online. I couldn't find any social media for them, so it's off to their website. It's a basic website, but as long as I can get a better understanding of them, plus a good look at the menu, it doesn't really matter. Right, what have we got? Import sake, authentic Japanese food, fresh tasty, sounds great. Even better, they do lunch, dinner and a takeaway. And what's this? According to TripAdvisor, they rank second out of 139 places to eat in Maidenhead. Now I'm not that much of a great believer in TripAdvisor, as I feel they're not always accurate or fair to the new businesses that get reviewed, but still second is really impressive. On to the menu. To be honest, I'd pretty much decided on what I want even before looking at the menu, and it was always going to be some variety of sushi and sashimi. So will I go for the mixed sushi set or the salmon sushi set? What to do, what to do? Easy go for the variety, and in this case the larger mixed sushi set. What else have they got? Katsu chicken, udon noodle soup, donbori, no idea, yaki noodles, yakisoba, ooh. Gyoizas. I love those, but it must be for another day. Ah, okay, here we are, sashimi. So what are my choices? Salmon, tuna, mackerel, mixed. Again, hmm, I think it's gonna have to be the mixed option for me. Right, anything else? I think I've gotta have a few edamame beans too. Okay, that's enough. Let's get out of the virtual world and into the real world. Let's eat out. As you can see, it turns out I've ordered quite a lot of food, but I can't wait to try it all. I'll take it home if I can't get through it all. That's one of the great things about sushi being served cold, I guess. Just check out all of this food. It looks absolutely amazing. I've eaten all of these varieties of sushi and sashimi before, all except the aburi salmon. I actually had to ask one of the Miyazaki staff members about this dish, and they told me it's one of the most popular nigiri sushi items at the restaurant. It's made by brushing soy sauce over the seared rather than raw salmon. By searing it, the salmon becomes sweeter and even more delicious. Sounds amazing, and as always, I'm in. So what makes good sushi? Well, as always, this is objective, and different people like different things. However, I think some things are universal. For instance, the rice should not be too soft nor too firm, and the balance of seasoning should be just right. If it's too sweet or tastes too vinegary, then I don't think they know how to prepare it, and I would question how well they can prepare anything else. It's the rice which is the foundation on which the sushi is built. The best thing to do is inspect your nigiri. In a quality establishment, the atamai, that's the chef in a Japanese restaurant, will know the proper balance of fish to rice and huge chunks of fish, while fun and yummy, can upset the balance. Wow, that salmon is absolutely amazing and easily one of my favorites. The rice holds its shape really well, so the chef has got a good balance of vinegar, salt and sugar. Thankfully, that's a delicious salmon nigiri. If you don't know, nigiri sushi is a familiar style of sushi made up of an oval mound of rice, usually with a slice of raw fish on top. It's the stickiness of the rice, which is why it's so important to get right, combined with the moisture from the topping that helps to stick the strip of raw fish to the mound of rice underneath. The word nigiri comes from the Japanese nigiri sushi, which translates as hand-pressed sushi. Onto my favorite, sashimi. I know for a lot of people the thought of eating raw fish is off-putting, and for a while I was certainly one of them. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. Oh, I love tuna sashimi. Sashimi is common to most Japanese sushi restaurants, as it simply strips of raw fish with no rice at all, although rice can be an accompaniment. As such, sashimi is not technically a type of sushi, since sushi always features rice. But you can think of nigiri sushi as hand-pressed mounds of rice with a strip of sashimi on top. To highlight the delicate flavour, as well as the texture, the chef cuts the fish into different thicknesses by variety of the fish, its age and by the season. Depending on the ingredient, sashimi can be sliced into various shapes, including flat slices, thin strips, rectangles, cubes and diagonal slices. A razor-sharp knife and impeccable knife skills are critical for making sashimi, so the slices are smooth, uniform and visually appealing. Now to try the mackerel sashimi. While most sashimi is served raw, some items are briefly cooked, a bit like the aburi salmon earlier, either braised, seared or boiled for the sake of flavour and texture, but also to avoid some food poisoning. Let's try a few of these edamame beans. I made the big mistake when I went to my first Japanese restaurant of thinking these are like mange too, where you eat the whole thing. But let me tell you, they're definitely not, and certainly not a good idea on a first date. You look like a right idiot. But these are really good. 
Edamame beans are basically young soybeans that are usually eaten while they're still in the pod. Unlike mature soybeans, edamame beans are soft, edible and tasty, especially when covered in some sea salt and a little bit of chilli. Right, onto the sushi rolls. Got a good mixture here. I think the ones with the nori, which is the type of seaweed on the inside, are California rolls. I'm not 100% sure what the others are called though. I do know that they are filled differently with cucumber, tuna, salmon and avocado. Again, salmon's definitely my favourite. Most of the sushi rolls we've become familiar with are from the United States, and they're a western take on the Japanese maki sushi. Even if they're not traditional, it certainly doesn't mean they're not delicious. Okay, I'm starting to slow down now. Only room for a few more edamame beans, I think. Wow, what a brilliant meal. I really enjoyed every single part of that. I think if you're gonna push me, my favorite was definitely either the tuna sashimi or the mackerel sashimi. But whichever, Maidenhead is certainly lucky to have such a great secret on its doorstep. And my takeaway would be that if you like traditional, authentic Japanese cooking, it's to get down here as soon as possible. Enjoy. If you like this video, then give us a like and a follow, as it will really help the channel to grow. Also, any comments below about where we should tell our next dining favourite would be amazing. We really want to grow our community, so grab a fork and get involved.